tensions between the central government and the central bank, which have been brewing for months now, uh, have reached fever pitch. Khalihan ki mitti aur krishi pravritti ka Sardar Vallabhai Patel ki wo vishwa vikrami pratima. As a, a Bollywood narrator would say, in dono stories mein Modi hai, Patel hai, RSS bhi hai aur cash to hai hi hai. But you know, uh, there is a tiny difference uh, between the two stories and that is the letter T. You see, one was about a statue, the other about a statute. Prime Minister Modi uh, helmed and orchestrated both the stories. In the first one, uh, he redeemed his six-year-old pledge to build the world's tallest statue uh, on River Narmada, a 182-meter salute uh, to Sardar Patel, who's of course an icon of uh, India's independence movement. In the second but uh, bigger story, Modi threatened uh, the Reserve Bank of India with a surgical strike. Now, both stories pivoted on Patel's. Of course, the Sardar in one and a governor uh, in the other. Uh, the Sardar had a beef. Now, that's a problem uh, with the RSS in the first story. He was wary about its religious and uh, cultural nationalism. He had banned it after uh, Mahatma Gandhi's assassination. In the second story, Governor Patel had, again, a beef uh, with the RSS's uh, uh, primitive economics, which is articulated with such panache by its aggressive ideologue uh, as Guru Murthy. And I quote, Raghuram Rajan destroyed uh, the Reserve Bank of India's independence by making it subservient to global thought. RBI has lost its capacity to think for India. So unfortunately, this was no longer the rant of an outsider because Guru Murthy was para-dropped uh, into RBI's board uh, shortly thereafter uh, and a much respected uh, commercial banker was, was rudely sacked. Now, there was controversy around that. Governor Patel, therefore, uh, like the Sardar 70 years ago, now Governor Patel had to battle a Hindutva uh, uh, insurgency in the economic policy area, a Hindutva insurgency in his front yard. Then there was a cash, a big cash overhang across both the stories. One, that's the statue, needed 3,000 crores to melt, mold and erect 95,000 tons of construction material. In the other, uh, an electorally uh, spendthrift Modi government was eyeing the rupees 3 lakh crore. 3 lakh crore of surpluses built over decades uh, of uh, prudent uh, profitability. It wanted uh, RBI to gift it a windfall gain which could be as high as 2% uh, of GDP. Now, forget about uh, how it would weaken RBI's balance sheet in the process. Now, when reminded about Argentina's plight after it had uh, denuded its central bank's reserves by nearly $7 billion, that was simply ignored. Warnings by uh, uh, renowned economists to keep a strong RBI cushion against India's chronic current account deficits, that just uh, fell on deaf ears. The cash hoard that had eluded Prime Minister Modi in demonetization, remember they were looking for 3 to 4 lakh crores there, that eluded them in demonetization was now uh, sought to be compensated by raiding its own central bank. But now, see the difference that an innocent little tea uh, can make. The statue, even if extravagant, is certainly still uh, a force for the good. But the statute is a constitutional nuclear button which the Founding Fathers had inserted under India's no first use uh, doctrine. It's meant as a deterrent, hopefully never uh, to be deployed except in the rarest of rare emergencies. Remember, uh, Section 7 of the RBI Act, which allows the government to force consultations. Now, force, so far so good. You force consultations, no problem. But the scary part is that it also enables uh, the government to direct RBI to do its bidding. Poof! It's such, it's such a malignant provision that it's never, it's never been used by any government. Not even during famines, as in uh, 1965, or wars, as in uh, 1965 and 1971, or near bankruptcy, as in 1991, or global recession, as in 2008. Even in those extenuating circumstances, this was never used. Because Section 7's casual or frequent uh, invocation can demolish the most cherished 
principle of economic governance, which is a central bank which independently makes uh, monetary policy for the long-term uh, interests of the nation without surrendering to the short-term whims of a government which is, you know, looking to inject uh, a temporary and perhaps a false uh, feel-good factor among people. And certainly, certainly not to be done just a few months uh, before tough elections, perhaps as, uh, you know, one more attempt, one more tool uh, to neutralize uh, an anti-incumbency sentiment. No, sir. This is just not on.